Hey guys, welcome back. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe for more content about classical guitar and all things music. So as classical guitarists, we're very lucky that we get to play music by great composers, such as Leo Brauer, Augustine Berrios, and of course, Johann Sebastian Bach. But just because this music is great doesn't mean that people always want to hear it. Most of the time, many people don't want to hear it. So a few years back, I was playing a concert, and on the program was your typical classical guitar repertoire. And just for fun, at the end, I decided to play an arrangement of Here Comes the Sun that I found earlier that week in a book. And at the end of the concert, no matter how musically I thought I played my Bach, or how well I thought I nailed those tough scale passages, what everybody wanted to talk about was how much they enjoyed the Beatles arrangement I played. But I'm sure, as many of you guys know, it's not playing this music that's hard, it's finding this music that's the difficult part. For quite some time, I would buy books that had a collection of pieces. And then when somebody came and asked me what songs I knew, I could give them a list of all the songs I could play and let them choose. When I first got really into playing weddings, I would always just hope that the piece they asked for, I happened to have music for, or it was something that I could find fairly easily. But many times for weddings and personal events, people want that special song, of course. One time, I was substituting for a wedding for a colleague of mine who couldn't make it. And it was only a few days before the wedding, so I said, send me the music as soon as you can. And a few hours later, I got an email, and it had this in it. So I called my friend and asked him to explain what he does. And after a little bit of explanation and some trial and error on my part, I was able to come up with an arrangement. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I make quick arrangements for solo guitar when all you have is a lead sheet. So before we start, I want to recommend a few things to you that might help make this easier. If the song that you're playing is not in a guitar friendly key, such as a key with a bunch of flats or a bunch of sharps, my recommendation would be to transpose it first and then figure out what you're gonna do with your melody. Although this might sound impossible at first, the more you do this, the better you'll get at it, and going from keys such as A flat to A are actually going to be much easier than you think. Another big thing that I would recommend is making sure that you know tons of ways to play basic chords. Of course you want to know the obvious open chords. But you also want to know where to play most of these chords all over the neck as well. Let's take the C chord for example. You could do it over here which gives us the fifth in the top. You could do it over here, which gives us either the 7th or the dominant 7th in the top. Or you could do it up here, which gives us the 3rd in the top. The more ways that you know how to voice a chord is going to give you that many more ways to give an accompaniment to a melody note. Finally, a great skill to have is being able to emphasize one note over others by using just the right hand alone. This is going to be pretty much essential if you're trying to play a melody on top of a chord or an arpeggio. You're going to want to make sure that you hear the melody note ever so slightly more over the bass line and the accompaniment pattern. So the first thing that I would recommend for you to do would be to play the melody on the guitar, especially if it's one that you're not too familiar with. The next question that I like to ask myself is, should I move this melody up the octave? And this can often be determined by how low the lowest note of the melody is. As you see here, the lowest note is a C. And even though that note isn't crazy low, it doesn't give us a whole lot of room to do that much with an accompaniment pattern later on. So I'm going to go ahead and move this melody up the octave. When I do that, it will sound like this. Now that I have my melody the way I want it, the next thing I'm going to do is figure out how can I pair the root of each chord with each melody note. As you can see in the score, the first note I have is an F, and the first chord I have is also an F. So in deciding where to place the bass notes, I generally like to go lower first. That doesn't mean I have to always have the root there, but it's a great place to start. So I'm going to start with doing the F here, and having the melody F be up here. The next one I notice I have is going to be a C and an A. If I apply this process to the whole entire first section of the song, I'm going to get something like this. So 
So now that I have my melody paired with the bass line, the next thing I want to do is figure out how can I fill in some of those gaps with other notes of the chords. To keep this simple, I'm going to be using many familiar chord shapes that almost all guitarists use. The first one that I'm going to be using is the F bar chord. Once I do that, I'm going to shift up to position 5 and use the bottom part of what many people recognize as the A minor bar chord. Instead of doing that, I'm going to play only the top three strings with the open A string and have my pinky to play the melody note C above it. So this is the part where you guys can start taking your own creative liberties. If I were to do it right now, I would probably do something like this for the first section. So I'm sure as you can see, it's not the most interesting or the most sophisticated arrangement out there. As I mentioned, once you get to the accompaniment that's beyond just the bass and melody, there's tons of possibilities that you guys can do. And another one might be something more like this, which is very similar to the first one, but it has a lot more going on in the accompaniment. So as you can see, once you get to that point, there's tons of possibilities that you can do and it's really just up to your own personal preference of what you think sounds the best and what you think you can pull off the best. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. See you soon.